to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. I hope I'll be able to get through today's video without becoming an emotional wreck. Um, uh, for reasons that will become apparent when I read read one of the messages, uh, and also because this puzzle apparently has reduced some very well-known constructors in Sudoku to tears. It's called Across the Lines, and it's by Michael Lefkowitz. And we have been deluged over the last two days with um, re requests to take a look at this puzzle. Apparently, it is wonderful. Um, I I've read the rules and it clearly, well, it's clearly referencing uh, Tracy Chapman's song Across the Lines. I mean, it says Across the Lines in the Grid and Tracy Chapman in the bottom right hand corner. Um, and this was, a, I mean, this is an album. Tracy Chapman's sort of eponymous debut album was very much the soundtrack of my youth. Um, everyone listened to that album and it, it's, it's magnificent. And when you revisit it today, it's like, it's like taking a trip to see an old friend. Um, and, and this this song is um, it's it's sort of a a lament about race relations um, in America and how um, segregation was sort of ruining the American dream. And th this uh, th you'll see when I read the rules of this, Michael's clearly had uh, sort of the lyrics from the song in mind um, when when constructing the rules that the, the rules themselves are really yeah that they're, they're really interesting and if I show you uh, let me show you uh, the comments on this I got them I think I do I snipped them from Logic Masters Germany um, I mean this is I mean look at the people who are commenting Nordy a truly emotional soul Florian Wartman, who also wrote to us about the puzzle, saying it's the best implementation of a theme I've seen in a puzzle. Mixo, a work of art. Marty Sears, the peddling pianist. If you read these messages, they're basically saying that this is this is a work of complete genius. Um, one of my favourite puzzles, period. And then the peddling pianist says, downright brilliant puzzle. Um, I would strongly encourage solvers to take a moment to look at their completed grid and think deeply about the meaning of certain digits and clues. Michael is right up there as one of the most innovative and exciting constructors in the world of Sudoku right now. Um, and as I say, we've, we've had other messages saying that this, this puzzle has made them cry. So um, it, it, it's fascinating. I'm looking forward to having a, a go at it. Um, and... You know, it's a subject I think that is, it is quite close to my own heart. I am the hero, the hero of my adult life is Martin Luther King Jr. I studied, I studied him a lot, uh, and I, I know I know there are elements of his life that are controversial, but in terms of the message, in all his speeches, uh, I, I found I find them profoundly moving. And um, yeah, I've, I've many many of my many of my I suppose of the, of the crossword puzzles I've constructed in the past, of which I'm most proud, have been themed on on the um, the speeches of Martin Luther King. Anyway, that's by, by the by. Let us um, let us uh, instead turn our attention to other matters before I read you the rules and we get stuck into solving the puzzle. Um, what do I have to tell you about? Not really very much. We've got a James Bond theme Sudoku hunt coming up on Patreon very soon. Look out for that. Hopefully a, cr a crossword video tomorrow. Birthdays. Let me do a couple of birthdays. Um, Abby. Abby, you've turned 17 today uh, over there in Florida. And I know that not only is it your birthday today, but today months marks your 10 month anniversary with your boyfriend, Juan. Um, and apparently there is going to be an abundance of chocolate cake today. So I hope it is exceptionally good uh, chocolate cake with an awful lot of icing. Uh, and then the other birthday I've got is Ken. Ken, you've turned 25 today. And I know this because your boyfriend Aidan wrote to us. And I understand that the two of you have now moved back in together. Well, no, you moved back in together last year in Cambridge. I think it's Cambridge, England, but it might be Cambridge, Massachusetts. I'm not sure. Um, but the two of you have basically been in different continents studying and doing career stuff. Uh, but finally, you're back together again. 
um, and you really enjoy watching Cracking the Cryptid together, which is lovely to hear. So Ken, I hope you have a brilliant birthday. If you are in Cambridge, England, uh, Fitzbillies is where I used to spend it too much of my time and they did do exceptionally good cakes so i hope you have a cake from fitzbillies to celebrate your birthday um now if you'll indulge me uh one of the reasons i was worried about the emotional aspects of today's solve is an email we received from one of our viewers peter um we we get occasionally we get we get emails that really knock us for six um and we got this one and, and I, I hope it's okay if I if I share it with you um, let me try and do that um, so Peter writes Simon and Mark uh, this is my first time writing in and I just wanted to briefly brackets after rereading I can see it's not so brief share a story of how your incredible channel has had a profound impact on me and my life my youngest son was born last June with a complex congenital heart defect. I'd share the various acronyms that detail our heart warriors issues, but they wouldn't mean much to you or many of your viewers, so I'll save everyone the headache. Over the last nine plus months, we have had various trips to the hospital. Our stays ranged in length from just a few hours for regularly scheduled appointments to multiple weeks for respiratory viruses that take a toll on his body because of the complexity of his heart. Each and every trip, without fail, I would have a CTC video to help me pass the time. Whether it was before I fell asleep on the awful hospital fold-down futons or just in the waiting room, Mark and Simon were there. Our most recent stay brought some good news. The surgeon had a plan to fix our child's heart and it would happen coincidentally on the day of the full solar eclipse, April the 8th. Now since his birth, our son has always marched to the beat of his own drum, or maybe his wonderfully complicated heart, we still aren't sure which. Every time a doctor had a plan, he made sure that they didn't get to execute the plan in the way they wanted to. As you can imagine, this made for some stressful months. And yet the regularity of your videos helped keep me sane, I always knew that if it was my night to stay at the hospital with our youngest, I would have new videos from CTC to watch while the nurses were tending to my child or before I went to sleep. I'm writing this email lying on one of those hospital fold-down futons next to my son in his hospital bed who once again made his own plan. His body was telling everyone that he didn't want to wait until the solar eclipse. He heard there was a plan to fix his heart, and he was ready for it. On Tuesday, March the 26th, the incredible, no less than God sent surgical team completed a full repair of our nine month old's heart. He is unlikely to ever need surgical intervention again, though knowing his past history, I'll believe that when I see it. And once again, I find myself watching Simon. Tonight, he is solving Sue Domino. I want to say thank you. Thank you for wasting my time while I lived through life-altering trauma. Thank you for keeping me company while IV and respiratory machines click and clack and beep away in the various hospital rooms I've lived in. Thank you for being a constant when everything else around me was anything but consistent. And thank you for your continued and persistent positivity. Without it, I'm not sure I would have been able to have the same outlook for the full and complete recovery of our son. Full and complete recovery our son is going to have. Keep being wonderful time wasters. You are rather good at it. Just about managed to read it without crying. Better than I did earlier. Um, but Peter, thank you very much for writing it to us. Um, the um, it means a lot. Um, means uh, means an incredible amount. Um, can't really believe believe it when you get emails like that. But um, we are so thrilled <laughs> with the news about your your son. I mean, goodness knows what you must have been through and that that surgery is possible to repair things so small and 
isn't it absolutely fantastic and i yeah we are thrilled and um if we have distracted you uh in some of the tough times we we take a small amount of pride in that so thank you very very much for writing to us it really does mean a lot um now okay now we'll get on to another emotional subject we'll have a look at across the lines by michael lefkowitz and i will read you the rules of this puzzle now prepare yourselves because th this is this is also very emotive um normal sudoku rules apply so that means we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row in every column and in every three by three box crop key dots whites live between digits with consecutive values so what that means is if we've got a white crop key dot here if this square here was a three this square here has to be either it's actually something going on isn't there in that as sort of weird clippage of the graphics there that's odd um anyway the um if this was three this would have to be two or four to be consecutive with three blacks live between digits in a two to one ratio not all possible dots are given so what does that mean well let's look at this black dot here if this was a four this square would either have to be two or eight because digits being in a two to one ratio means that one of the digits will always be double the other and not all dots are given it's just telling us that it's perfectly possible for these squares for example to be in a two and a four obviously this digit is double this one there's no black dot that's absolutely fine we're being told positive information about particular dominoes and we don't know anything about the rest of the dominoes that's all that means now then there is a rule about redlining so it says connect the dollar symbols with a single meandering red line the red line moves along cell edges and never touches itself it cannot cross a dot or the train tracks. The regions created by the red line never contain both high values, six, seven, eight, nine, and low values, brackets one, two, three, four. The words in the grid can be ignored. So that's, that's I think, the reference to the Tracy Chapman uh, lines here. Now, what, what I, I can immediately recognize as potentially emotive here is that I am familiar with the term redlining. Redlining is sort of an out-of-date practice, I think an illegal practice now, where um, banks used to refuse to lend to people in in poor areas and they used to discriminate on, on racial grounds. Um, and so I, th I think what Michael has done here is said we've well, got to draw we've got to draw red lines through the grid and that and then we've got the the black and the white crop key dots which are sort of indicative of the discrimination that was suffered um so it, it, it's it's an incredible idea and and this this is a train track running through the grid which i think must be there must be some line which i can't remember in the tracy chapman song that probably referred to being on the wrong side of the tracks or something i don't know but um yeah it, it's a, it's an incredible incredible sort of setup for a puzzle uh it's got three stars out of five for difficulty do have a go the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual but now i get to play let's get cracking i mean just to say that's just on that last bit of the rules let me um let me go to the pen tool and see if we can draw uh, oh we need a red line don't we we need um red line so if you don't know how to draw um lines in our software if you click on the cog icon on the right hand side of the grid and enable your pen tool i always have my pen tool enabled um, then that will enable you to to draw these lines now we've got to draw red lines somehow now what did it say we're not allowed to go through we move we, the red lines move along cell edges never touch them so it doesn't touch itself and it cannot cross a dot or the train track so let's just draw in let's say that was the red line i think the red line's going to have to be longer than that for reasons i'll explain in a moment but i think what we're then being told is that we've divided the grid there with the red line and then these squares let's say one of these digits was a six 
then this region couldn't contain a 1, 2, 3 or a 4 is how I read the rules because we have to sort of segregate the high digits from the low digits. Um, and if, if, this, if this had a 2 in it, then there couldn't be a 6, 7, 8 or 9 in that region. Now, the reason that I am slightly perplexed by this is that Sorry, I'll just stop talking because I am a bit perplexed by this. Is because there are obviously a lot of <laughs> there are a lot of high digits and a lot of low digits in a Sudoku puzzle. So, for example, this box down here is going to have some sixes, sevens, eights, and nines in it, and it's going to have some one, two, threes, and fours in it, and they can't live. They have to be delineated from one another in the puzzle by the red line. I think. I think that must be right. So the red lines that we're going to end up with have a lot of work to do. They are going to have to, firstly, they're going to have, there's going to have to be a red line in every box. And I suppose what we're going to get is clusters, aren't we? So we're going to get clusters of high digits or low digits to allow the segregation to occur. Because if you had, uh, I don't know, let's just, let me just try and draw something like this. If you had this pattern, I don't think, and I might be wrong, but I don't think you could draw a red line that didn't touch itself, that delineated, because you'd, no, you couldn't, you couldn't, because the, the line would touch itself, because you'd have to divide the seven from the three, and you'd have to divide the three from the six. And you'd have to divide the seven from the one and you'd have to divide the six from the one and you'd have a cross shape of red line and the line certainly it's touched itself in the center of the cross so in fact that is useful that is useful because i'm now going to allege and this might be wrong as well but i'm going to go with it i don't think you can have a checkerboard of high low digits in the puzzle that must be right yeah that's exactly what we've just done so if we go six seven one two anywhere in the puzzle the puzzle's broken I think because I'd have to draw red lines delineating the one from the six and the seven I have to draw red lines delineating the two from the six seven and the puzzle would be broken so right so basically what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to not have any checkerboarding of high and low digits right Ah, okay, sorry, I've had another idea. The other thought I'm having now is, didn't, did it say something about the train tracks? Yeah, okay, so the red line that we're drawing in the grid never crosses a Kropke dot, and it never crosses the train tracks. So, so can I just plonk a... I'm going to do a sort of slither link exercise, I think. It's like a slither link. We can just cross all of these. And this is basically saying that as we draw our line in the grid, we can never, you know, we can never do that because we would cross a Kropke dot. Now, this might be more complicated. We're not allowed to cross the train. So we can't cross the train track like that or like that. So again, we can draw, we can draw every line, every, yeah, every, every edge in the puzzle that crosses the train track, our red line is not allowed to cross. So we can draw that in. Right, and then we can see that, so yeah, okay, so how does the red line get to this box of the grid? And that's actually worth our attention because we can't cross the train track. But the line has to get down here. Not only does the line have to get down here to delineate the 6s, 7s, 8s and 9s from 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s in this box, but it has to get out again as well. What do I mean? Um, well, well, if, I, if the line came round the top there into this box and did some wiggling, to get, to get back up to the dollar sign at the top, it's going to have to come out of this box again and it can't come it can't come back up here and go this way or it would touch itself to do that so it, so so basically what we're being told is that the red line loops around the top of the train track here 
and it must come around the bottom of the train track here, which I'm actually realizing is not is not as powerful as I was hoping because it, we can't really extend it because we don't know whether it does that or that. The same is true here, isn't it? So I'm probably doing this all wrong as well. I'm probably meant to think about the dots, but I, I don't. Yeah, see, Mark would love this cluster of dots here, whereas to me it just looks intimidating. I'm going to try and <laughs> to try and ignore that for as long as possible. Um, okay, all right. One more thought. Yeah, so look at those squares. Now, if I read the rules correctly, each one of these cells must be from the same sort of polarity of digits. What do I mean by that? Well, if one of those digits was a six, because because that then none of the none of the other green digits if one of these digits was a six none of the other green digits could be a one two three or four because there is no way of the red line separating this this stretch of train track in fact the whole train track yeah the whole train track is the same polarity isn't it is that wrong that must be right yeah, so let's just play around with that. If that's a six, I am claiming, certainly in this box, I'm definitely claiming it. I'm definitely claiming in this box, because I can't delineate this, this square, say, from this by drawing a red line, then these, all of those green squares have to not include ones, twos, threes, and fours. So they would actually have to be five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, is it possible that that is a low digit? Well, if that was a low digit, yeah, the, the, I think this region drawing idea doesn't just apply within a box, does it? It applies within the puzzle. So in order for this to be true, I must, and there must be a red line I can draw that cuts this cell off from this cell, but there isn't. All of this is in the same region. That's really interesting. So, so, and sorry, that's probably very obvious as well. Now, now I'm actually thinking about it. I'm thinking it is obvious. So all of, right, we don't know whether that's a six. If that turns out to be a six, it's serendipitous and I apologize. Um, but all of these are the same polarity, by which I mean that this, this whole train track is either all low digits or all high digits. Now, the complicating thing here, which I've noticed in box three, is that we can't just do a high-low shading because of the naughty digit five. Because five, I want to say five could be in either group. which complicates matters, doesn't it? I mean, I think what we could do, we could, yeah, okay. What we can do in here, we know either this is one, two, three, four, and five, or it's six, seven, eight, nine, and five. So this string of digits, well, no, let me put it a different way. This, these four cells are either one, two, three, four, or six, seven, eight, nine. That must be true. Uh, we'll make those uh, see, if I make them blue, I'm going to think they're low, and I don't know what they are. I'll make them purple. Yeah, that's lovely. That's a lovely colour. Right. Okay. And doesn't that mean that this... Well, it mean, doesn't it mean both of those are purple? I think it must do. Because in order for... If this wasn't purple, with this being purple, I must be able to draw a line between those cells. I must do. And I can't, because of the crocky dot. Yes, I see. Okay. All right, I'm going to do the same in box five. I've got five digits of the same polarity, one of which will be a five, which obviously is, an, is a neutral polarity, but, but that's fine. That means the other digits have all got to be of purple polarity. Oh, 
over. <laughs> I got <laughs> over has been written into the grid. Across the lines, over. Uh, hmm. I don't know what the song well enough to know whether that's a lyric from the song or whether it's there's going to be another message coming out of the grid. Um, hang on, I could draw, I could draw. I've got the red line there, look, and a red line there. Okay, and that actually reinforces something I was wondering about this string of digits, look. Yeah, so these are all either green or purple. Now, how could they be purple? Well, there's two reasons they can't be purple now. The first is we've actually got the, the bones of a red line delineating this string of digits from this string of digits. But also, we can't possibly have all of these being purple because we know that the purple digits are either a 1, 2, 3, 4 set and a, possibly a 5 or a 6, 7, 8. 9 set and possibly a 5. So there are a maximum of 5 of any type of digit. There are not 7 of any type of digit in a row. So these squares are definitely green. Bobby. Okay, so that's green by Kropke Dottage. Okay. Ah, right. Now we should have a visit of these um, these Kropke dots because this has got very... I think this, is, this has told me that green is in fact blue. <laughs> I know... <laughs> which may sound like a strange thing to say, but I think it's true. Because, let's think about these three. These two black Kropke dots joining three different cells, where all three of these cells have to be different digits. Um, how could that work? Well, what we, what we know is we've got to double a number and then we've got to double it again. So if one of these digits was a one, then we could have one, two, four. If one of them is a two, we could have two, four, eight. But we can't have three as a digit on these black crop dots now, because then we go three, six, twelve. And twelve is not a Sudoku digit. So this string of digits is either one, two, four, or it's two, four, eight. Well, it can't be two, four, eight. Because if this was two, four, eight, one of these digits is a four or a two, and one of these digits is an eight, which, which needs to be delineated by the red line and couldn't be. So in fact, these, well, this is beautiful because this is one, two, four then, the middle digit of which is two, and I get a digit. So all those digits are ones and fours. And right, and now green has become low, definitely. Uh, so we'll go, we'll go, we're meant to go blue for that, cold digits. And I'll go orange hot for hot digits. Uh, and the reason we do this is because uh, apparently blue and orange in our uh, in our palette are the best for colorblind folk. Uh, I number myself among the, ca the mildly colorblind, so it seems very reasonable to try and um, to try and help people to see. So now, okay, so now my red line must delineate orange from blue. Yeah, okay, sorry, I could have drawn all these. Look, I can draw all these little bits and things in the grid. Yeah, okay, but we don't know, do we, what's going on? See, I've got four of each colour in row one, but that, I think, means this is ambiguous. Because because five can join either colour, We don't, and we don't know whether any of those squares are five. What, what would... Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think I do know what that is. I might be wrong. Oh, right, but but five is an important number, isn't it? Because if I get five of a colour in any row, column or box, I know, so I'm thinking of column three here, these are all low digits, which could include a five, and indeed must include five, because there are five blue ones here. So these are the digits one, two, three, four and five. So these are all definitely hot digits. And they are six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to label them because they cannot include five. Right, and this this white dot is connecting those squares, and that white dot is connecting these squares. So these all become hot digits. Um, I feel like I should be able to do something with that. That's a hot digit. Look, it's connected by a Kropke dot. Yeah, okay, look at this 
uh, dot here. If that was blue, then I'd have six blues in the column, and that's not a possible number of blues, so that's got to be orange. Now, I've now got four of each again in column two. Bobbin's, Bobbin's face. Okay, those have got to be orange, because if again, if they were blue, that would be implying there were seven low digits in box seven, which is just not true, is it? So these are all hot digits, but again, it's, it, the five is going to be difficult here. Uh, can that, can this possibly be, no, that can't possibly be blue. Oh, that. Oh, I like this. Oh, under the bridge. What? Across the lines. Oh, I wish I knew the song better. Across the lines. Oh. I think there is a line under the bridge in the song, but I can't remember it. Uh, anyway, sorry, I got distracted then. Oh, yeah, no, this can't be blue. Because if that's blue, the way I would delineate this cell from the blue cells around it would be with a square. And that square, most certainly, that red line is definitely touching itself. And red lines are not nearly that naughty. So that's got to be orange. Now, where next? Is that... Oh, yeah, okay, look, we've got runs of three black dots. They're, they're the same as that. That's huge. Oh, I'm so sorry. Look, these have all got to be blue with two in the middle of them. Because we've worked out that we can't, because because you can't, we can't cut a Kropke dot with the red line. They've all got to be of the same polarity. They've all got to be low or high. So these are all forced to be one, two, four triples, and we can do lots and lots of one fouring in the grid. Now that square can't be orange because it would be surrounded by a uh, red line. Now I've got five blues in box six, so these are all orange. And one of these, oh, in fact, we know that they must be a 3-5 pair by Sudoku. Two by Sudoku goes there. It's got to be, um, it's got to be a blue digit, so we can't plonk it in, in the orange. That won't work. Oh, nearly. You can nearly get two placed in that box. It's in one of two places because of this two. So it's got to be up there, which means, gosh, there's a lot of... Playing a gale outside. Um, over the tracks. Across the lines. Oh. Bridge over the tracks. I can't remember the words. I think this is probably um, the lyrics to the song. Let me just look at the words again. Yeah, I mean, this, this line in the um, instructions, the words in the grid can be ignored. Can be ignored. It doesn't say must be ignored at all. Can be ignored. I don't know. Anyway, let's draw our red line in more. Do -do 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 -do. So this, okay, so that, re right, so the red line does this sort of thing now. We can, do, we can do it here, look. Yeah, okay, I've got to be much more diligent about how I draw my, my red line in, look. Here we go, look, and do more up here. And... Right, aha, these three. They can't all be blue, but they yeah, all have to be the same colour, so all those are orange. Ah, and we get the dreaded 4-4 four, four in row 8, look. Um, okay, that, look, that's a Kropke dot attaching that, so that's orange. Oh, column nine, I've got five blues. That's it. Okay, so I can do, these must be four orange, and they must not include five, therefore. That digit in, um, in box three can't go in those squares it's not equal to two so that digit is a one or a four by sudoku
that's a one four pair in column thingy thing technical term for column seven now not seeing anything else desperately straightforward here I can probably can I get that one I suppose I suppose yeah okay I can sort it yes I know I can do this one I can, I can do its color I can do its color because it can't be four eight they're of different colors there are different polarities it can't be three six for the same reason so it's either a one two pair or a two four pair so it's definitely it's definitely blue and now this is the first opportunity we've had to think about the checkerboard idea because if this was orange how would I delete uh, let's just prove our theory how would we delineate the oranges here from the blues without the the red line touching itself it, you couldn't do it could you so actually that is also blue so this yeah th this black dot has got two on it because it's either one two or two four and there's a two here so I get a two in the grid this square is one or four now ah, this is interesting so in this string of digits we've got to have that naughty five along with three so this is three five there's a three five here so this is a three five pair there's definitely three and five in these two squares oops i want to do a corner pencil mark there these uh well there's definitely a two in these squares these are one two four ah bobbins one two four like that and that's not two and now what does this mean it means i can do a bit more red line here hmm. and i've nearly the uh, problem is i've nearly exhausted all my crop key dots now i've got one more here which looks complicated to figure out um, looks to me like it would be difficult for it to be actually I'm not sure if it's if it's blue then I've got to avoid a checkerboard so that would be blue all of this would be blue that would be orange don't see that's it actually if that's oh that's interesting if that's blue I also mustn't have a checkerboard there so that would be blue so if this is blue lots of things have to be blue to avoid checkerboards you'd actually get sort of a z pentomino of blueliness in box two if that's orange ah Ah, oh, it's the other right sorry it's the exact opposite my brain is poor naughty brain right this is not orange um because if it's orange look how many oranges we'd have in box um let me show you how oh across the lines who uh, across the lines who would dare to go Oh, I can't I can't quite I still can't quite remember if that's right uh, if that is the next lyric but across the lines but anyway <laughs> let's focus on the puzzle Simon um, if this is orange I've done all my oranges in box two so everything else has to be blue and look what look what we've got here that is a checkerboard and to delineate it we're going to our red line is going to be too naughty for words so this is blue but this is big because if this is blue we mustn't have a checkerboard here so that's blue we mustn't have a checkerboard there so that is blue and that's orange that's all the thinking we did before and then our red line needs to delineate everything so the red line starts from this dollar it goes does something here but we don't know what that is and then some point it wends its way over back over here again 
Oh, I know what we could do. I've got five blues in this row, so that's orange. And... Okay, so there we get there. And what does this mean? I have no idea. Two. This two here gives me a two there, look. How many twos have we got? Several. Oh, but the twos in the middle three columns are all rather recalcitrant. We don't get to learn about those. Which is jolly naughty. Yeah, we might, I hesitate to say it, you know it's against my better nature, but we might have to do some Sudoku here. The reason I'm saying that is that I can see, for example, that those squares are six, there are certain boxes, and this is another box, where we actually know where the five is, in the sense we know which colour the fives are in. And yeah, Oh no, that's nearly good. I thought that was going to give me this column, but we can see we've got a one, four pair, a two, three or five here. So this is three or five. But if it's five, it still might be orange. So we can't color it. If it's three, obviously we could color it blue. This has also got to be high because I've only got four highs uh, in, in row six. These are, these are all high. This, the, ah, this box is all high. That's high, definitely. These, the same here. These are all just high. Yeah, so I think the idea of this puzzle, in terms of solving it, might be to do with spotting what's happening with the fives. Look at, look at this arrangement. Yeah, these are extreme. The under the bridge digits are extreme. What do I mean? Well, look, we've got a, a sequence that goes dub, dub, dub dub of consecutive digits and this digit is six or nine and this digit is high, is is also high so this either goes six seven eight nine or it goes nine eight seven six so these two are always extreme within that sequence these two are always middly that is uh, absolutely unknown is it, uh, is it really I don't know, actually, six, seven, eight, nine. Then this would have to be seven, six, no, sorry, nine, eight, seven, six. This would have to be eight. So this is always either seven or eight. So this digit is not five, if that's worth it. Oh, we already knew that, because look, we've got five blues in this, in this box. Bobby. Yeah, maybe I've just got to keep better track of where these fives are. There's definitely a three and a five here. Yeah, but we don't know here, do we? This square is definitely either. No, I don't, actually, I don't know. I, don't, I just know it's six, seven, eight or nine. I don't think I know what it is. Oh, how weird. Okay, let's maybe try this column, where five, oh, I don't know, actually, this might not be good a good idea either. I was going to say that five has to appear in an orange cell, and that, that is true. I was also going to say five can't be there, because I've already got four, five blues in this row, so I know that the five is a blue digit in row two. Yeah, I think I think the way I'm doing the shading here is almost making this harder. So the five is either here with a six above it. So that digit, or it's here. And then this is a six, seven pair. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether I, whether that's a useful. Ah, hang on. I've got five high digits in this column. 
that's interesting so that's definitely a low digit which is encouraging ah okay so i need to focus more on checkerboards that digit is not orange because if that's orange look at this I've got five oranges now in this box, so that is blue. Oh, look, there's more stuff going on here. <laughs> Let's read it. That separates whites from, presumably from blacks, is it? That separates whites from, there's no, there's nothing in that one. I don't know, but look, that would give us a, a, um, a checkerboard here, which we can't have. So in fact, what we're learning is that this square is blue which allows us to do more red lining. And we can do red lining here and here and there, which I hadn't done, and there, which I hadn't done. Right, so now, now what do we do? Ah, that can't be a five because I've only got four blue digits in column two. So these are one, oh, hang on. I want to do I want to do one three four. I'm not sure that three is justified in that square. Uh, what do we think this is? Do we? I don't know. And what do we think about? Ooh. Ah, I've got a 7-8 pair here, so that square is 6 or 9. Does that affect this triple? Not really. I'd love to know if the... Oh, the 5 in this column was something I was mulling over, wasn't it? Oh, here's a thought. I can get the, I can get the parity of this digit. Yeah, okay, look at the blue digits. They're one, two, three, and four. So they include two and four. Now, something we know about a white Kropke dot is it's a pair of consecutive digits. So there must be an even digit. So there must be an even digit on this domino and there must be an even digit on this domino. So in this column, there are definitely four even digits in total in the top eight cells of the column. There's a two and a four in the blue, and then there's two more in those four squares. And there are only four even digits in Sudoku, two, four, six, and eight. So that digit is odd. Not only is it high, it's odd. So that digit is even by Kropke dotage. That digit is even by Kropke dotage, so odd by Kropke dotage. But now, all right, okay. That's not seven. That's, in fact, that's seven. <laughs> that's lovely. That is a lovely deduction. Oh, I like that. Right. So th what I did there was I looked at this and in my brain, it said three cell Renban. Don't know why my brain said that. But basically, that, that is obviously three consecutive digits selected from the digits five, six, seven, eight and nine. So however we cut those digits up, we're going to have a seven in the sequence. It's either five, six, seven, six, seven, eight. Oh, my phone's buzzing. Oh dear, I can't get that now. I want to finish this video. Um, it's, it's either going to be uh, five, six, seven, six, seven, eight, or seven, eight, nine. So seven is always in the sequence. Now watch what that does. That knocks seven out of this square. So this is an extreme digit. It's five or nine. And this is a three cell sequence. So it's funny my brain thinks of that more as a natural Remban than that. But the, the, the principle is the same in both. There must be a seven on this Remban sequence, which must now be here. That's beautiful. That's simple and beautiful. Oh, this is big. That's giving me an eight here. So that can't be a six. So that's nine, eight, seven, six. Now this is eight now. So this digit is odd it's seven or nine these digits are not seven and eight that digit is not six or nine ah nearly uh, this digit is a nine okay i've been left a voicemail by whoever that was on the phone the, oh this is a nine so that's a five so that's five that's six good grief now oh oh this is right 
now we can come back to another point we were thinking about earlier. So in column two, this is now a five, six pair, but that one we know can't be five because there were five blues in this row. So that's six, that's five. Uh, somehow we don't know that, that's seven or nine. It's high, but it's, it's, we don't know what it is. Um, okay, where, where is eight in box seven? The answer is there, and that gets us another shading done. So we, get, we can do that. Now, okay, so the line must go like that. Oh, I don't know. Do I know? Oh, no, maybe I do know. Yes, I, I do know. Yes, I do know, because this is five. So five has been allocated to orange in row three. So there must be four other orange digits, and therefore that is in fact orange. Now, I'm just a bit worried that my line has gone a bit awry here. Is that fair? or No, it's maybe it's still okay. So it's going up there to start with. But... Now I've got five oranges here. So in fact, this is a seven or a nine. Look, this is a six by dint of Sudoku, which somehow Michael's got me to do uh, against my better judgment. And that is a, that is a three, that's a three in the corner. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. We really should have a Tracy Chapman song for a three in the corner today. Um, but yeah, you, you've got a fast car. It doesn't quite have the same ring, does it? So look, oh, hang on. I've got to be, oh, I see. So the red, yeah, the red line just goes up. Yeah, okay, because we're not creating loops. We're creating, we're creating red lining. So we've got to go there. Now, what does that mean? I don't know is the short answer, but these squares, there's only four high oranges in box uh, thingy thing, technical term for box box two. So these squares are from seven, eight, and nine. There must be an eight on here because there must be an even digit and six isn't available. So these don't include eight. And, okay. Now, what do we do next? We had an absolute flurry of activity. Yes, where's five in this column? There must be a five in orange in this column. I'm, not, I'm warming to the idea that this wasn't a total disaster doing it this way. There must be a five in orange because there are five orange digits. And if five doesn't go there, so that's a five. Five is in one of those two squares. I don't know which I'd prefer it to be, to be honest. Um, right, what do we do next? We could... What <laughs> we could do... We could perhaps do... No, I'm wrong. I thought maybe I could. Yeah, I might do that. I might try and think about ones and fours. Because I can, I can shade those two the same color, which is the same as that one, which means there's a, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so we'll do, we'll try and delineate the ones and fours. Because remember when we thought this digit here, we asked where it went in blue in box three. Well, it's got to go there now, which which we've seen before. So this is blue now. Sorry, it's 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 green because that one isn't. So let's give this one a color, which means that one's that color, which means that one is green again. So that one is now purple by dint of it not being able to be green. Now, what we really would love to do is to extend that up there, perhaps. Uh, oh, but the th oh, which we can do for the reason I saw before. When I was shading these ones in, I noticed that this digit, which must be in blue in box seven, has to go here. So that is a one or a four, and that's going to get my shading to go up there. So that's purple. That's green. 
which means that's purple, I suppose. Right, oh, that's lovely. Right, so that's become purple by dint of a little known arcane process called Sudoku. So this is now one, four. These two squares now are a three, five pair. Green is in one of those two squares. I don't know. I'm not sure whether I should shade that or not. Can I get... I don't like the look of this, actually. It's suddenly... No, that's fine. Where is purple in box eight? There, which is not a digit we've even coloured to this point. Um, so that's definitely not two anymore. Oh, this is good. This is great, because now that is purple in, in box seven. And that gives me a one four pair and makes this a three. So that's not a three. In fact, that that is our old friend the five making a uh, making a dilatory appearance. Um, okay, what does that mean? Have we done? Yeah, that's purple. This is a purple digit. I've not put purple into box four. So it goes there. Purple is most certainly not a three. So that's a three. How many threes have we? Oh, we've hardly got any. <laughs> oh, but if that's a three, that's not a three. So that's a three. Okay, suddenly we are getting them. We just had to focus on them in the right way. Five is in one of those two squares. That is a three. If that's a three, that's big because that's going to place two for me here. And two is definitely a blue digit which means that is not a two. That's interesting. I've now got a two five pair in box two. So this, ah, that's good. So that's one four. That's the green digit that we couldn't find. Oh, yeah, no, that's really good. Because now that's a green digit that we've never even uh, found either. So now green is there, which places a two here, perhaps more importantly. Yeah, now this is two, this is five. Ah, that's we've now we've now got the green sorted out because look what we've just done there. Oh, look, 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 look. Loads of things are going on. This is a one, two, three, four quadruple in blue, and there's five in orange. We need need five orange cells in this box. So that is orange, which is going to red line a bit more. Delineate this. Delineate this. Don't make a checkerboard. So this must be blue now to avoid a checkerboard. I've only got four though, so yes. Okay, but in row seven, I've got five oranges, so that must be blue. Oh, there it, there it is, that separates whites from... So we've got some something going on with the words here. We're gonna to have to check that out. Blue can't have more than five in a box, so that is now orange. We can draw this in and we might have done our our, our red lining. I'm, I'm unsure about that, but there's loads of stuff going on from a Sudoku perspective all of a sudden. Yeah, uh, uh, coming back to my first thought, which is look, five has been attached to a green four by consecutive, by its consecutive nature. So all of the greens in the grid are now fours and all of the purples in the grid are now ones and now this five that well, this is a three or a five so it must be a three that's a five that's a three that's a five this digit here is not eight so that is six or so which means that is six or seven so this sequence here is not six seven eight now it would break this square this sequence is seven eight nine um, and the 8 must go in the middle of it. So that's 8. <laughs> Somehow it's not resolved. Don't know how that happens. But that's now a 6. That's 7. Get rid of 7s from all of these squares. This is definitely not 9 anymore. And there's a 7, 9 pair in this column. So this is 8. That's 7. That's 7. 
this seven is doing nice work. Seven and nine. Nine, nine, seven. This has become a seven, eight pair. So this is definitely not seven. That's definitely not seven. This is now definitely a seven or an eight. And that is also a seven or an eight. And in fact, that is an eight. So that's a seven, that's a six, that's a nine. So that's an eight, that's a seven. That's a six, so that's an eight. <laughs> I need to put an eight in that box, it must go here. That's nine, that's six, and that's, oh, that's nine by Sudoku and dotage. And that is perhaps the Sudoku solved, but I want to have a look at these, these shadings here. I can't read them very well. Um, maybe we should, well, should we check that we've got the puzzle right first? Let's check we've got the puzzle right, yes. Congrats. Thank you for solving the puzzle. The, li uh, the lyrics are from Across the Lines, released in 1988, just a few months before I was born. Gosh, you're young, Michael. <laughs> Redlining refers to discriminatory lending practices in the US, such as banks refusing to provide mortgages in majority black neighborhoods. Redlining is now illegal, but it partitioned US cities along race and class lines that can still be seen today. Indeed. Um, that is... Let's just have a look at what's going on here. Can we do coloring? I change that one. I'm going to change. Oh no, hang on. I'll change. I want to change. I'll change blue to black, maybe. Just so I can see it very clearly. Yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. And now, if we do the, the if we do all the white cells in a different color now. That we can see where we can see what the shading says now what do we choose blue maybe i need a dark color that the the white or maybe even red actually that's not brilliant with the black there but it goes across the lines who would dare to go under the bridge over the tracks that separates whites from blacks and literally the red this is what is so brilliant about this. well there's many actually there's many brilliant things about this but one of the brilliant things is that oh it's ah it's okay so what michael is saying going back to the rules we've got white digits the white dots are living in the high values and the, the, the black dots are living in the low values and then the red lining is literally delineating the high values people from, from the, the low values in, in, a, in a way that is completely sort of thematically relevant. and. And the red line is literally here that separates the whites from the blacks. It is, that's it, that is so beautiful. Uh, I mean, who, who, I can't remember which, which constructor it was or which, which solver it was that said something like, it's a beautiful sort of depiction of the theme. And it, it, it is, it is, it's, that is stunning. It is, it's stunning, and it's it's. Uh, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it's extraordinary. It's a historical thing that, I mean, ha how it happened, one 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 wonders. But as 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 a man I much admire once said, one. Well, one day, what was it? I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will sit together at the table of brotherhood. Um, and those are words that I hope we could all agree with. 
I have a dream that my, one day my four children will live in a nation when they are judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Um, that's, uh, it's, it's, abs it's really, that really is, that really is something, Michael. It really is. I mean, to, to, yeah, it's, it's a bit jaw dropping, actually. It's a bit jaw dropping. The execution of that with the red line delineating yes, across the lines he would yeah and fitting it in with the wording of the song which is very very poignant that's brilliant it's quite brilliant it's quite brilliant um, thank you very much thank you very much for setting it um, it's it is a poignant thing and thank you for setting it so well. I think this this will garner a lot of comments, and rightly so. And I have managed to get through this edition of Cracking the Cryptic without really blubbing. Um, and I hope, yeah, I hope those of you who are still watching, I hope it was it was a thought provoking today. Um, and thank you for watching. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.